I'm gonna give you my top seven favorite sea trout flies for winter and early spring sea trout fly fishing. Temperatures near freezing calls for some extreme decisions when it comes to how the sea trout has to survive. In many instances, it means going in extremely shallow. And if there is any time of the year with a good chance of catching a huge sea trout from the shoreline of the ocean, it is now. Snow is swirling in the air, fingers and toes are hurting, but you know it, the time is now. I'm gonna begin this video with the flies that I think you need for absolute cold as you can imagine, when the water temperature is close to freezing. And then I will progress to the flies that I usually have good results with in early spring. When recording this video, I am part of a guiding with Fish Your Dream. I am not a guide today for this, uh, for this trip, but my colleague Daniel is, but I just tagged along because it's nice to be out in nature when, when filming or and ever. So it will be a lot of jumping around as the, we change spots back and forth and hopefully they will catch a sea trout as well. So let's begin. One lucky guy. <laughs> if you're looking for something ultra fluorescent for ice cold water, here is a good fly for you. I tie this fly with some easy shrimp legs, great movement. You can also use flies with rubber legs, that works excellent as well. But this kind of movement that these, these give, it is, especially in winter time, it is very, very effective. If you want to move on and see the next coming fly on the list, don't worry, there is timestamps down below so you can check it out. Each fly on this list I will actually tie the fly so I explain because it's so important in how you choose to taper the flies and how you put the weight distribution where you need weight and not weight for these flies to work in the cold water. For this Leo Goldie as I call the fly I have placed out a kind of classic beginning of the fly dubbing ball and a wing of dubbing and uh, here you have the shrimp legs they come in these uh, pre-made forms that you can just rip them out of. I don't know if you used shrimp legs before, but it feels like a forgotten thing. And actually it's very easy to use. You tie them in just as a tail like this. No legs in between the wraps, all legs just stick out straight back. Can be causing tangles, but when you place the eyes right on top of the legs, like I do here, the eyes just helps to keep everything in place so nicely. I very seldom have any, any tangles on this fly. And when it happens, it's not due to the legs. It works really good to do like this. Here I attached some electric ripple ice fiber. In the past, I've tried several different natural materials like bucktail and such, but these fibers, they're super fluorescent and I love it. I want the mouth parts of this shrimp pattern to be quite full. So here I add some craft fur. This works as great as a filler. Also has great movements and I use a sand color. Also some ice wing fiber in hot pink. This I'm gonna trim off, it's a very long material. But uh, double folded, so use half as much as you intend to use. And then secure it by tying it back and just trim with a scissor. It's really easy to just pull off as well, but it does uh, look best when, when trimmed like this with a scissor. Down in the video description you find all the materials used because in this fly I have pre-made quite a stacked dubbing blend. Of course you don't need to have exactly these dubbings. I'm just making these, this dubbing mix up but uh, out of some gold dubbing, some pink dubbing and some sand color dubbing I made a yeah just a mix in the dubbing blender to have something with a lot of volume, a lot of fluorescent stuff in it. So check out what I'm used in the video description. The ribbing for this fly, I made it as easy as possible. Standard uh, fluorocarbon leader material, you can use nylon as well. Before I start to build up this bulky, bulky body, I want it to be really thick. And here I just used the dubbing mix that I've, I've used. So in three different sections of the fly, I use the same dubbing mix. For the back of this shrimp, I use body stretch. This material is so elastic. It is in the six millimeter size, and I think it just works great. I 
gently attached it in the front for me to start the ribbing. The ribbing is very easy because there's nothing in the way. Just have the pure dubbing mix down below. After the three first segments, I let go of the thread wraps in the front. And because it's so elastic, you can just tighten it before you do the next coming sections of the body. This is probably the most complicated part of the fly, just because of the thread control it requires. And the ability to just tighten these wraps, maintaining the tension everywhere. But this way you don't have to have a pre-cut shell back or anything. You can just use the body stretch and you will get it to have a natural taper all towards the head. Very important though to secure both the ribbing and the shell material really well in the front because otherwise they will fall out. So keep the tension all the way until you made the finishing knot and can begin to do the shaping of the body. This I do by brushing it a lot. It is very well secured by the nylon ribbing so you can use quite a lot of force. A round cut, the last tip of it. For aesthetic reasons I will use some Gulf fluorescent pink just to make some dots on the back. Cure them before I go on to the Gulf Flexman. And with the Gulf Flexman I covered the entire shell and also back on the lip that I round cut before. So it goes together nicely. So all the way out. Gulf Flexman is of course flexible and it can stay on really well then. And you have a long lasting fly. Cure it, and there you have it, Leo Goldie. The next fly, amazing for cold water fishing. I should, I think everyone should have this in their box and can be the only thing that works sometimes, just because the way it fishes, and that is the floating space shrimp. It is a fly that's not, it's not floating, but having this foam back, having it almost suspending in the water, fishing just under the surface. And you can have it, instead of dipping down when you pause it, you can have it just standing there. And that, when the water is very cold, can be the complete difference if a fish comes and takes it, or if you get stuck in the bottom. And it's really cool as well, because when you fished it in, it gets bite marks as well, which is really fun. So you have a foam back to a shrimp, and this gives it an amazing suspending effect in the water. Really good when the water temperature is low. To have this fly suspending, you obviously want a quite a light wired hook. For this, I've chosen the Arex Light Stinger. This is in size four. Begin with the tail out of ring neck rump hackle. And then I place a spay hackle feather in front of it. This hackle feather that I chosen. It's a bit too long for this fly, so I double folded it forward once to then return it back before I tie it all the way down. This way you can be quite flexible with which, which size of spay feather you choose. If you choose one too big, it's not an issue. Uh, this fluffy part is just the end of the uh, feather that I used. So one, one whole feather, but I added the fluffy thing in the bottom. Make a ball out of dubbing to be able to support the eyes. But first brush it up, tie it down a little bit, because you want as much of this hook length to be available to place foam on. So that's why I tied it all the way back. Here, a little bit of filling, so loose dubbing, just tied it down before I attach the foam back. The foam back is shaped to be the widest in the middle and a little bit slimmer towards the back. I changed the thread to a thinner one. Uh, I like to have a th thicker thread for the beginning of the fly just to be able to build this bulk because you want a quite a fat body. But for the finishing of the fly, I like it thinner. Of course you can do just with one thread. Dub the body, do a dubbing loop with a spay hackle and the dubbing mix. Dubbing mix info is in the video description, by the way. And here I wrap two close up turns before I go thin turns over the whole body. This mix out of a dub body with then the uh, 
dubbing loop over it gives a really fluffy body with lots of movement and it's very durable. Brush the fibers down before you place down the foam. This foam carpet I secured with some super glue on the thread. Then finish off the fly. Here you can now control how much you want this to float. So if you cut it off and remove the lip completely there, then you will have a fly that floats a little bit less. But I leave a little lip to be able to give a nice lift to the fly. I had to think long and hard about what flies to include in this video. And not to have the most spectacular flies, but to actually have the flies that year after year have delivered fish for me in this time of year. I have one that is so simple to make. A fly that in Swedish is called Draparmasken. So you tie a tail of a marabou feather and then you just cut off or rip off material that you dub the body with and you have a ready to go fly. Super easy, crazy amount of movements and uh, yeah, this, this fly will probably not last very long but super easy option for a spay fly or so that uh, yeah, just works so well. And when it comes to early spring as well, there's starting to be a lot of ragworms and stuff in the water. Remember these flies, you can tie them in any color and if there is small worms in the water, try this out for sure. I mean, you can tie them in dark brown, sand color, anything. As long as there is a marabou feather dyed in that color, you should really try it. It feels almost stupid to share such a simple fly. But I was really impressed to see the underwater footage as well. This fly looks really good. Credit to Telis Katsugianos for this amazing fly. Here is a fly that you traditionally only see in bright pink. When you tie them in these a little bit more natural colors, I think the span of when you can use it grows even more. And it's not like pink is the only color that works. These work really well. I, I really wanted to have one here that is pearl white, like pure white as snow or ice. Just be able to call it ice mulkis. But the only reason why is that I haven't had enough time testing that color. I have fished more with these gray and olive tones. So to include this in the video feels much more right for me. But yeah, I really want to have a, a a pure white one as well. I've heard quite some people fishing with it with great results, but I haven't tested it enough myself yet. If you already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'm definitely sure you've heard of the Mulkis before and heard me talk about it while tying. Well, if you go back to the underwater footage of it in this video, you see exactly what I've been talking about, this wiggly action that it gets. It is just so cool. To get that, you need to have the right balance, perhaps add a little bit of weight. That's something I've started to do more and more. But to go two layers of the, of the chenille, pack it first backwards and then forward. This way you get much more of a dense body than you would get otherwise. One very important food source in this time of year winter and early spring for the sea trout is gammarus. They eat a lot of that stuff. I just wanted to make a twist out of the copper baston. There is many options or variants of gammarus flies, but I think this looks awesome. Now, Robert, why don't you tie a normal copper baston like most people because it's so easy? Well, I kind of like complicating things. I think it's uh, enjoyment to be able to pick out a nice looking fly from the fly box and I've been struggling countless times with these cameras patterns so I have a little trick when it comes to making the body with a both belly shield and a back shield but first I want to make this really fat all my gamma's flies I caught the most fish on when they were having a really bulky taper that I accomplish here by adding foam because I don't want it to be heavy so after I place the foam, I make a quite a bulky dubbing body as well. Dubbing mix in the video description. But here it is about, the question is, do you want more foam or more dubbing? I prefer to use a quite a lot of foam so it don't spend a lot of dubbing. 
But now, when it comes to the body ribbing, I do first with the nylon ribbing the belly shield, which is a lateral scale, the wide version, and wrap it the whole way forward and then the whole way back. It doesn't look nice now, but later on, trust me, it's not gonna show and it's so easy to make the body this way. Now body stretch, this is the thinner version, 4 mm so I don't have to stretch it very hard. But straight out of the package you get a nice taper if you just adjust the tension. If you want it the widest, at where usually Agamemnus is the widest, in the middle here or towards the end, you give, give it a lot of slack. But once you start to reach the front, you get more tension to the thread. And that way you get it much thinner. Thread control here in the end is key to be able to wrap this up. And you see a double fold over the nylon here as well. Or actually floor carbon in my case, but it doesn't matter. I used to UTC 140 thread here just because I enjoy it so much. What thread you use doesn't actually affect the fly so much, but I really enjoy using this thread. I leave the tag ends just because I'm then able to hide the uh, more traditional big thread base at the end of the fly. With a thinner Dyneema thread you will not be able to see the head barely. So then you don't have to do this. But this way I covered it up and I had an enjoyable time tying with a stretchy UTC thread. Now I brush it up a lot. The dubbing needs to get a lot of treatment now because it's really wrapped up underneath the fluorocarbon ribbing. So now you actually have a ready to go fly, but I chose to do it to the next level with adding some Gulf UV resin, the Flexman version, to the back, just making it nice and shiny. Cure it upside down to get a nice bubble on the back where I want it to be the fattest. And now comes to another even optional thing, but I thought it would be fun to share here. I brush out the dubbing to separate it, to then later on fill up with UV resin in the, on the inside. And here you can be very creative. You can decide the shape you want of the gamarus. You can actually go all the way out on the wings, so to say, of the dubbing, to create almost like a spoon shape. I do it a little bit, so it can if you do a harder pull with the retrieve, it may flick around a little bit. But you can really do a spoon-shaped Gamorous fly to have the most extreme movement in the water. So when we made it this far, we had some great flies for winter fishing. And just thinking about what color I'm really missing for early spring that I don't have included in this box yet, it has to be olive. Olive is a great color for any time of the year, but especially in early spring, there's starting to be some algae on the stones and stuff. To have something that blends in in those environments can be excellent in days when it's really calm, but this olive, I think it works in so many scenarios. Here I tied it as a classic woolly bagger. This way it stays very tangle free and uh, has a nice flash to it. So let's tie it. I hope to make these videos as inspiring as possible. Fish masks is just another way of making a bait fish head. Making the tail, I do as I always do with the fibers of the marabou feather pointing backwards before I attach some flash to it as well. But having the, the feather like this keeps it quite tangle free. Ribbing has been the same throughout the whole video carbon 2x dubbing mix inspired by the flyer called Brenda and the hackle in the color olive dyed over brown so it gives a nice almost three-dimensional color spectrum uh, each feather in this bag is quite unique and uh, I, I chose one that matches the, the dubbing and the, the tail quite well but to have, be somewhere between brown and olive. I think it's really cool. 
I love this color. Tighten the ribbing really well because that's the only thing keeping this feather in place. Cutting off the tag end from the feather before brushing it very much. So you want this, all these materials to blend together. Finishing off with some super glue over the knot to also make a base to place the fish mask. Super easy fly, takes just a couple of minutes and it's a pretty good bait fish or worm imitation. Final fly on the list, Peel Express bait fish. I use this throughout the whole year, but it's a great smaller bait fish that can also go as any small prey, like a little shrimp or so. It is fluorescent, it is very natural, it has some grisly tone to it. This is a phenomenal fly, especially for like quite clear water, calm conditions. And winter time, it is a great option to have in the box for a smaller presentation. Not all flies should be big. So something that uh, is small, like the Teal Express bait fish, a couple of gammarus, it's nice to have. I begin this fly with attaching the thread in the space of super glue and attach, I'm starting to wrap the quite busy made dubbing mix with predator dubbing and a senior fusion dub. It's quite a pain to mix them two together, but making a ball of dubbing and then brush it out before starting to attach the first teal feather. I rip off the fibers from the teal feather actually and place them as a tail. This is by far the easiest way. It's quite a stiff and unpleasant uh, fiber to work with. This spread being in control when you do the first part in the tail. It's the best way I would say. In the front I actually hackle it, add some layers of predator dubbing mix and then hack a little bit more in the front. And uh, that's the actual fly tying. It's very easy. It's not a bait fish if you don't add eyes to it. So finishing up with super glue on the thread, do some winds and then end with a whip finish. That's such a secure way. Touch the eyes with some just normal super glue. That works very fine for smaller eyes like this. And then having some extra accent points with the UV resin in fluorescent red. I do it, I fill up the gap between the eyes with this. The rest of the head is just clear UV resin, Gulf Classic. Cure it. Do another layer perhaps to finish it off nicely. have a little minnow. Predator dubbing, the flash fibers really shines through to have something perfect for the, to have something perfect for the clear waters. I hope you didn't forget that it was a guiding bait, right? Stone of the last Oh, we said <laughs> <Did> that. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Let me see the fly. What's the color? <laughs> Orange space shrimp. Nice. <laughs> nice one. Beautiful. Bye, buddy. With this box, I'm so ready for winter. Thank you very much for watching. And here you have more inspiration for what to tie for the sea trout fly box.